When did you first start writing about fashion? Hmm, that is a tricky question. I guess only because the way that I kind of first started, you know, writing about fashion was in this really informal way, which I guess sort of, uh, you know, uh, links to what I do now. Um, but it was on a, probably on a, a forum called The Fashion Sparks. And that's, you know, where I started engaging with kind of like-minded people that were obsessed with fashion. And, you know, there were all these people that thought of fashion, um, beyond just clothes that you wear or, oh, what am I going to wear today kind of thing. So, and I never really had that opportunity in, in real life because I went to this um, sort of really academic girls' school where, you know, I don't think clothes or fashion was necessarily anyone's priority. And it never occurred to me to sort of write about fashion in a, in a sort of um, formal or um, article-based kind of way, but more to just to have this dialogue with other people. And some of my posts actually on the fashion spot were quite long-winded, and you know they, they probably look like you know nonsensical rants, really. And um, that from from doing that on the fashion spot, that's kind of how the blog came about. And that was probably in about two thousand and four, three, and then leading up to 2006 when I started the blog. But before that, obviously, you were, you were interested in fashion. It was something that you'd been... Yeah, I mean, for some reason, I never thought of fashion as a, as a possible career for me. I just never... I actually never even realised that that was an option, <laughs> weirdly enough, because you know, I... Uh, I had this, you know, sort of feeling that fashion was this sort of extracurricular activity. It was this hobby and it was this sort of thing that, you know, you had to push to the side because, you know, in your main part of your life, you're supposed to be doing other things like, I don't know, studying for Latin A level or, you know, then going on to university and doing something, something proper, which is, which is really stupid of me at the time now that I think back to it and... Not that I regret not going on to study fashion, but um, um, I think it's, I've had this mentality always about fashion being this sort of hobby, this sort of sideline passion, because, you know, you get scared that when you make something your kind of occupational vocation, you start losing, you know, the passion for it. Delving back... A bit further, and asking an even more abstract question, can you remember when you first actually got interested in fashion? I guess it's really difficult because, you know, I'm trying to think separate from, you know, just putting the clothes on my back and, you know, being interested in that and taking control of that. I know that very clearly because I remember all the arguments that I had with my parents about mm. it. Like, when I was 11, I was like, no, I don't want to wear that, I want to wear this and that. I suppose that was the sort of starting point you know i'm not one of those that those people that, that, will, that can say oh when i was eight i saw this fashion show on tv and i was mesmerized and blah blah blah, blah. I, I didn't really start off that way um but i think it was from sort of the point of you know taking control of what i was wearing and from that point onwards just sort of building that up into this sort of secret hobby and and I would you know like I said the only information source that I had were like the limited section of you know library books it was about like two shelves high of fashion books in the local library and then uh, from when I was 13 started buying you know ID uh, dazed a little bit the face definitely and both me and my sister sort of getting into that and you know we didn't really understand everything that was in, you know in this magazine it seemed like a whole world and even though they were talking about kind of London and what was going on in these um, sort of subcultures and you know all this stuff it just seemed so alien to me from like living in Finchley and not doing anything exciting at all so I think it was sort of from 
saying no to clothes from ETAM and then progressing into, you know, finding out more and trying to inform myself the best that I could, um, really. But not, yeah, not in the way that I was thought this was something that I wanted to do in the future, but just in the way that I was into like a lot of things, like I'd got, like I'd get obsessed with, um, I don't know, Austin and find out everything about Jane Austen at mm. you know, one point, or find out something about a historical period and I you know, research manically about that. So I think it just comes from having a really obsessive tendency mm. <laughs> about anything. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people say that the way you write is sort of the way people want to hear people write about fashion. And it is, it's very personal. Yeah, and it's about what, how I feel about the clothes, like what these things, what these clothes sort of, um, how I react to them. I think that's how most people sort of feel about clothes, really, but then they sort of try and take it to another level and try and put it into, um, you know, a greater context. But that's why, you know, fashion writers like Kathy Horan and Su Susie Menkes, that's what, that's how, that's why they do so well in putting, you know, these into a wider context mm -hmm. so that, you know, it's informative in that way, but I'm not really trying to do that. And I'm just trying to sort of articulate my thoughts about, you know, what I've seen in a way that um, is sort of like a first reaction or, you know, yeah, a bit emotional because um, obviously what I write about, you know, I have to have a, because I'm voluntarily doing it kind mm. of every day and, you know, if I didn't, if I wasn't passionate about what I was writing about, you know, I can never sort of write a hundred words of, not probably not even a hundred words of text in something that didn't, you know, I didn't feel, like really feel. Is it important for you then that the blog is kind of personal? I've always found it really weird, like in, um, I only knew this sort of like a couple of years on and, and when I started sort of seeing how it worked in the industry that, you know, the industry, a lot of people who work in fashion don't actually wear the things that, you know, they supposedly wax lyrical about and that they talk about a lot, which I always found really kind of strange because you know what what is the point then of sort of discussing like all these amazing clothes and you know showing uh, you know saying how what a an achievement this this or that collection is when you're not really doing for doing what the showing what the clothes are supposed to do you know that they do function as clothes and you know they are supposed to go on people's backs so um and for me, I kind of, um, I kind of really enjoy kind of being able to experiment with that. Not to the degree where you know I'm able to have every catwalk piece you know at my disposal, but you know at every opportunity, I kind of love incorporating those sort of fantasies and working them into, you know, how you wear and how. I wear things is a big part of, you know, the blog, and I kind of set it out, set out to do it that way because I kind of felt that at the time, and I don't know if maybe I do still feel the same way, but you know that you you've got to put your money where your mouth is, and you've got to sort of wear what you're talking about. What's the point of talking about all these extreme things if you're not up for it yourself? <laughs> I'm interested in if reactions to you and reactions mm. to kind of fashion blogs in general how the, the change you've seen over the past few years in yeah. response to that because personally lie, I think it's totally it's, transformed it's it's an utter transformation and I'm not gonna lie like people at the beginning were like fashion blogs what is that you know I had some the I mean the thing I guess was good for me was that I didn't I didn't have any you know pretenses about about what my fashion blog was I I knew that you know there was this was going to be a thing that nobody was going nobody in the industry was going to be that accepting of and that's why at the beginning when I was when I was um, blogging 
you know, I did it at the side of my full-time job. I always had a full-time job, like, up until, like, May this year. I always kind of had a um, full-time job. I didn't make it into something that where I wanted it to be my career. And mm -hmm. with that, it meant, you know, I didn't really have to deal with industry or industry acceptance, not up until I started working um, for days in, in uh, 2008. So... Um, it, it was only from then on, really, when I started going to shows, you know, on behalf of Days, and, you know, that's when I really kind of gauged opinion, and it changed so dramatically from when, even when I started Days to up until present. It seems to have been, like, within a season. Within a season, you know, when Dolce and Gabbana invited bloggers to sit first row. For some reason, I declined. I don't know why. <laughs> why did I do that? I don't know. Um, I don't know, I, I, I was scared actually, you know, I, I found it a bit daunting and um, it's kind of funny how, um, you know, then other sort of brands started taking on, you know, sort of liaising, having liaisons with certain bloggers and um, communicating with bloggers. Suddenly I was getting emails from, you know, uh, people that I you know, people with a, a Gucci group of email address, I'm like, oh, is this a fake email address mm. emailing me? You know, a kind of, or, or PR agencies and things. And um, it just sort of changed so dramatically. And I'm not entirely sure whether it's a sort of, um, they were just sort of uh, latching onto a bandwagon. You know, they felt they had to do it, you know. Uh, Social media, big thing for 2009. We have to get on board. I'm sure they had like a meeting, and you know, where uh, media heads were sort of crunching out ways of engaging with social media. And uh, for me, it's just, you know, I'm kind of quite uh, not wary, but just sort of, I want, you know, I want to, of course, engage with these people, but. You know, you have to be tentative about it and, you know, you have to do it for the right reason. Now, this is a very general question, but it's one that I'm really interested to hear your answer to. What do you love about fashion? Oh, gosh. I think it is the change in it. You know, I think, you know, I don't think I could sustain an interest in, in something that never, never moved on or developed or, you know linked so much to you know the times that we're living i know it's really lofty to say that you know fashion has re repercussions you know in the way it reflects society or reflects you know but it does and you know that matters and the way it changes matters to me and it's interesting to see how um it develops you know be it on uh, catwalk collections, be it through, you know, what people are wearing, what are in stores, you know, and there's so many facets, to, you know, to it as well, you know, that you could delve into. There's so many aspects about fashion that make it such a sort of sprawling subject. And because I've sort of had, you know, an interest in it from such an early early time that you know it seemed it would seem weird like not to be not to be into it <laughs> so I can't mm. imagine myself like cutting myself off it